ex-NYPD officer goes on trial, accused of helping Beijing track down fugitive. China is exploring U.S. military capacity through open-source intelligence. China no-talk risk spiral out of control events, warns U.S. Defense Secretary. Tiananmen Square Massacre Museum to open in U.S. before 34th anniversary. Protesting China's regime demolishing their mosque, Hui people in Yunnan clash with the police. A former New York City police sergeant, facing charges of acting as an unlawful Chinese agent, stood trial on May 31st. The sergeant claimed he was unaware of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP's, involvement in a private surveillance assignment he was hired to do, allegedly intimidating a fugitive from China residing in the U.S. According to federal prosecutors, Michael McMahon pressured Xu Jin, a New Jersey resident, to return to China and face bribery and embezzlement charges. This incident highlights the CCP's Operation Fox Hunt, which targets, coerces, and intimidates its enemies to return home. The New York Times reported that prosecutors say Michael McMahon and two alleged Chinese agents on trial specifically targeted Xu Jin, a former CCP official. Irisa Chen, an assistant U.S. attorney, said Xu had fallen out of favor with the CCP around 2008 and relocated to the U.S. about two years later. Xu had resisted many attempts to persuade him to return, prompting the CCP in 2017 to use illicit methods to find him. According to the charges, an alleged Chinese agent hired McMahon to find Xu's home address as part of this effort. Once they located the victim's address, the other alleged Chinese agent put a note on Xu's door in 2018 saying, If you are willing to go back to the mainland and spend 10 years in prison, your wife and children will be all right. This trial marks the first case of purported fox hunt operations, among several others, to have reached the trial stage in the U.S. All three individuals involved in the trial have pleaded not guilty to charges of acting as Chinese agents without complying with the legal obligation to notify the U.S. Attorney General. The lawyer representing the former officer denies that his client knew the plot, claiming McMahon believed a Chinese construction company employed him to retrieve assets from Xu Jin. Orville Shell, director of the Center on U.S.-China Relations at the Asia Society, told the New York Times that the proceedings would illustrate Beijing's efforts to control speech outside its borders, saying, These trials are more than just trials about a few people. He added, We get to look within the interior of how this system of control from Beijing works. FBI Director Christopher Wray called the case an example of China's ongoing and widespread lawless behavior and our refusal to tolerate it. Threat intelligence firm Recorded Future is warning that China has been using publicly available information to evaluate the U.S.'s military might. The group said the Chinese military uses new collection, processing, and analysis technologies to exploit the data better. The report believes Beijing can mine quality intelligence from various sources, such as government releases, organizations, social media, newspapers, radio broadcasts, satellites, and others. The report warns the OSINT, Open Source Intelligence, almost certainly provides the PLA insight into foreign military capabilities, facilities, doctrine, decision-making, weapons, equipment, science and technology, exercises, training, intelligence, and deployments, providing a clear intelligence advantage. Some information is published purely for academic purposes, but Recorded Future said it is valuable enough to help Beijing advance its military capacities. One example is the information from the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. Zoe Haver, a threat intelligence analyst with Recorded Future, said the U.S. Naval War College has a China Maritime Studies Institute and it produces a lot of open source research on China. This is done in an academic setting, but ultimately foreign governments consider this valuable intelligence. Through contracts analysis, the group found that Beijing has also hired private Chinese companies to collect open source information, such as the U.S. military's activities and its support for Taiwan's defense. Haver said, referring to PLA as the People's Liberation Army, the PLA very much assumes the United States will in some form intervene in a Taiwan conflict, and they worked very hard to prepare for that type of scenario.
The report believes the information the U.S. and its allies share publicly poses security risks. Democratic governments such as Washington tend to publish a lot of information about the military as a means of being responsive to the public. Recorded Future, however, said closing up data accessibility won't be a practical solution. Instead, they suggest a focus on blocking automatic technologies from exploiting public databases or websites. Haver also urged private companies to conduct thorough due diligence about Chinese firms that want to buy access to their information. The U.S. is urging China to cease its disinterest in military discussion between both governments, arguing that it would lead to unwelcome consequences. A uh, free and open Indo-Pacific. Uh, and again, uh, You've heard me talk a number of times about the importance of countries uh, with, with, large, with uh, significant capabilities uh, being able to talk to each other so you can, you can manage crises and, and prevent uh, uh, things from spiraling out of control unnecessarily. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was speaking at a press conference in Tokyo, Japan on June 1st as he met with his Japanese counterpart Yasukazu Hamada. China has recently rejected a request from Washington for Austin to have a dialogue with Chinese Defense Chief Li Xiangfu on the sideline of the Shangri-La Dialogue, held in Singapore between June 2nd and 4th. Austin cited recent events from China that he said were concerning signs that situations might quickly spiral out of control at some point without communication. As we take a look at some of the things that China is doing in the, in the international airspace in the region and the international waterways, uh, you know, the provocative intercepts of our, our aircraft and, and also our allies' aircraft. Uh, that's very concerning, and we would hope that uh, they would alter their, their, uh, their actions. The U.S. Defense Department on May 30th released a video showing that a Chinese fighter jet intercepted a U.S. reconnaissance plane over the South China Sea, an incident said to have happened on May 27th. The event, which the Pentagon called an unnecessarily aggressive maneuver, is expected to be discussed at the Shangri-La Dialogue. According to NBC News, Secretary of State Antony Blinken on May 31st made similar warnings about Austin being unable to have a discussion with Lee. He said the jet encounter was dangerous and showed the need for the two sides to communicate. He said, The most dangerous thing is not to communicate, as a result, to have a misunderstanding and miscommunication. Reportedly, China complains that talks should not happen as long as Li is still under U.S. sanctions. As Reuters reported, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said, The U.S. side should immediately correct its wrong practices, show sincerity, and create the necessary atmosphere and conditions for dialogue and communication between the two militaries. A museum honoring the victims of the brutal crackdown by the Chinese Communist Party on the 1989 peaceful student protesters in Tiananmen Square is open in New York on June 2nd, two days before the 34th anniversary of the massacre. According to Nikkei Asia, the project to build the Tiananmen Square Massacre Memorial Museum on the June 4th Memorial Museum began in January last year after Hong Kong. Authorities permanently shut down a similar permanent exhibition in Hong Kong under the national security law imposed in 2020. Hong Kong police raided the museum in September 2021, seizing all the exhibits and freezing 280,000 of the organizers' assets. Wang Dan, a top student leader of the Tiananmen Square protests in 1989 and now living in the U.S., told Nikkei Asia that the museum organizers had raised over $500,000 in less than eight months after initiating the project. Wang said this is to preserve history, the memories of the demonstrators, and a way to counter the Chinese Communist Party. Zhou Fengshuo, another exiled former Tiananmen student leader, said the new museum was where the hope for a free China lives. Zhou said, because there is a hope, no matter what kind of defeat there was and how much struggle we had to go through, this dream lives here. Before the imposition of the national security law from Beijing, Hong Kong was one of the few places on Chinese territory where the anniversary of the Tiananmen massacre was held every year. Hundreds of thousands of people often gathered in the city's Victoria Park to remember the innocent victims of the CCP. But Hong Kong officials have been actively trying to eradicate any evidence of the event, taking steps to eliminate references to the Tiananmen Massacre. Statues and artwork commemorating the tragedy, such as the iconic Pillar of Shame, were removed while downplaying this critical incident in school textbooks. 
Earlier this week, Hong Kong security chief warned residents not to hold any special occasion in a few days' time, referencing the Tiananmen Square Massacre event, citing national security reasons. The Tiananmen Square Massacre was a tragic event in Beijing, China, in 1989. Peaceful pro-democracy demonstrations, primarily led by students, were met with a violent response from the CCP. On June 3rd and 4th, the CCP deployed its armed forces to suppress the protests. Because of the date of the event, it is often Often referred to as June Fourth Incident in China, the military's use of firearms and tanks resulted in the loss of numerous lives, with estimates varying widely. Where some sources said about 10,000 people died, the CCP has maintained strict censorship and control over information related to the incident, making it a highly sensitive and heavily censored topic within China. The Tiananmen Square massacre highlights the barbaric crimes committed by the CCP against its people, especially those the regime thinks might challenge its absolute power. The CCP's control of Islam continues, reaching a more extreme level. Mosques that look Arabic have been remodeled by the Chinese Communist Party regime. As a result, the minarets and domes of the mosque have mostly disappeared nationwide over the years. According to Bitter Winter, only a handful of Arabic-style mosques remain. Among them are the Nadia Ying Mosque and the Grand Mosque of the Shadian, both in Yunnan, where many Wei people live. Finally, the CCP does not condone the Najia Yang Mosque. On May 27th, residents were shocked to see 400 anti-riot police escorting workers with cranes, scaffolds, and bulldozers entering the mosque area. At the time, rumors spread that the CCP had decided to destroy the entire Najia Yang Mosque, even though the police insisted they would only destroy the Arabic dome and the minarets. On May 28, thousands of Hui Muslims gathered to protest the demolition of their mosque. Clashes between police and protesters broke out. In the face of fierce opposition from the people, the police had to withdraw for a while before returning with more police. Bitter Winter cited a netizen saying that the amount of police and military in Najia Ying has reached 5,000 and the internet in the area has been cut. Dozens of protesters were arrested and police ordered the crowd to surrender by June 6 or face severe punishment. At the same time, police are visiting all homes to tell residents that the local mosque will be rectified in June and become more beautiful. The police also warn people about the punishment if they join the demonstration.